I suppose it all started at sea. We have destroyed the bridge behind us. More so, we have demolished the land behind us. Now, little ship, look out. Beside you is the ocean. It is true, it does not always roar, and at times it lies there like silk and gold and dreams of goodness. But there will be hours when you realize that it is infinite. But how are we able to drink up the sea? Who gave us the cloth to wipe away the entire horizon? Hello, my love. I have been here for many days now. It is very quiet. The old telescopes are not used anymore. The light from the city blinds them. Even the universe has moved to the suburbs. I walked home yesterday down a sunless street. I had the feeling that someone was looking over me. Do you remember seeing the first photograph? An early morning street, empty and resigned. The stranger in the distance getting his boots polished, standing still long enough to be served. An accident. He could have been any man. They have all been photographed now. After the street, home, the body, the night sky. We did not wait very long, but the stars would not hold, not even for the camera. Their refusal to submit to the inescapable stillness. One must abandon the street to enter the observatory, tucked away behind walls, behind gardens. What did the communards think of it when they won the city? Did they enter these halls and demand to see the heavens? Imagine a sky filled with brotherhood and workers, new constellations for the new man. How bloody was it here when they were beaten back? Eighteen eighty seven. The director of the Paris Observatory convenes a conference to reveal the most ambitious idea in the history of the field. His name is Amadei Moucher. He wants to take an image of the sky, the whole sky, composed in thousands of black and white prints, the entire universe in a single image, the year is 1887. It is April. This will not have been the first time that Mouché plays mapmaker. A career officer in the French Navy, he spends years charting the oceans of French colonial holdings in the South Pacific. His flawless maps of the coast of Algiers win him membership into the Academy of Sciences. From there, the man who spent his life at sea will take up the post of director of the Paris Observatory. Toulouse, Cape of Good Hope, Oxford, Sydney. Cape Town, Hyderabad, 20 observatories from Europe and its colonies. They meet in Paris in the spring of 1887. 
they partition the sky and start shooting. But when did he dream this dream for the first time? The ordered heavens, a record of everything there is. Perhaps when he was still at sea, a navy man mapping the outposts of the world for empire. What did he see in those trade wind skies that made him so sure? At any hour of the day, somewhere in the world, hands prepare the next plate, align a telescope to a corner of the cornerless sky, to shoot an image every six minutes without ever stopping. They said it would take 12 years to complete the map. The camera could capture light far fainter than what the eye could see. More than six million flecks of light, each its own galaxy or a star worn to death. Later, the film would flake off the glass plates, sending vast areas of space back into absolute darkness. In 1900, the photographs are exhibited at the Exposition Universelle. They build a massive telescope so all can see the stars. A scientist dreamer talks of putting a mirror on a distant planet to see into our past. The telescope is still here in pieces crated up in the basement, never peered through again. The people never stop being promised the moon and the stars, but how are we to interpret these dreams? Slid in between the letters, a photograph of the counting room, a group of austere women at their desks with magnifying glasses and high collars. Like early cinema, the men shoot the cameras the women cut and measure to the ends of the visible these divisions remain the counting continues past the turn of the new century yet even as the observatories coordinate their efforts to see the entirety of the universe their governments do not lose sight of more earthly pursuits Interpretive delirium begins when man, ill-prepared, is taken by a sudden fear in the forest of symbols. In such a manner of seeing, as far as the eye can see, it recreates desire. The astronomer's techniques of mapping were soon inverted, pointed downwards to survey the earth in consecutive world wars, the photograph allowing for ever more precise and catastrophic bombing. The exclusive emphasis on an optical connection to the universe, to which astronomy quickly led, contained a portent of what was to come. The ancients' intercourse with the cosmos had been different the ecstatic trance. For it is in this experience alone that we gain certain knowledge of what is nearest to us and what is remote, and never one without the other. In the nights of annihilation of the last war, the frame of mankind was shaken by a feeling that resembled the bliss of an epileptic and the revolts that followed were the first attempt of mankind to bring the new body under its control.
It fell apart after the wars. They tried to keep going, finish the images, track down the lost photographs, complete the map, but it was no longer any use. The information scattered, the catalog too unwieldy for anyone to use. More so, the heavens they tried to capture had vanished long before. We already had a different universe in mind, infinitely larger, more mysterious, lonelier. The project was officially abandoned in 1963. Again, the maps had changed, the old ones lost or forgotten. I come too early, he said. My time is not yet. The tremendous event is still on its way, wandering. It has not reached the ears of men. Lightning and thunder need time. The light of stars needs time. Deeds need time, even after they are done, in order to be seen and heard.